Donald Trump was back in a New York courtroom today for the civil fraud trial that could wipe out his business empire less than a day after his struggling rivals for the GOP nomination gathered for a mostly meaningless debate in which they attacked each other. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. Last night, the non-Trump Republican candidates gathered for yet another pointless debate on a little-watched network called News Nation, where they all pretended they were running for president, despite the fact that they're roughly 50 points behind the frontrunner. Watching these people debate without Trump is like watching the Jets play each other. Now, <laughs> in fairness, I shouldn't be so glib. I may disagree with these people, but they've stepped up to take on the responsibility of leadership, and who knows, maybe there's a chance they'll beat Trump and become the nominee. So I do think we should at least listen to what they have to say. Just kidding, no one gives a <laughs> Why should I, why should I act like any of these people are actually running against Donald Trump when they won't even act like they're running against Donald Trump? They spent the whole debate fighting with each other, like pigeons fighting over a french fry in the parking lot of a restaurant that is owned by a much bigger pigeon. <laughs> in case you missed it, sorry, because you missed it, here's a quick recap of all these dweebs taking shots at each other. She will cave to the donors. She will not stand up for you. He's mad because well, those Wall Street donors used to support him and now they support me. In terms of these donors that I'm are supporting me, they're just yeah. jealous. They wish that they were supporting them. Carolina. That is not I true. I ejected them, so I have a record of standing up and do what's right, and, and here's the you thing. You have a record she, of lying. That's no That's reasonable. That's not my deal. That's that, not my that, deal yes, Chris. it's exactly what I'll, you said. I'll you my do deal this too. at every debate. I'll just, I'll tell you exactly what it is. Don't interrupt me. I didn't interrupt you. Hold on. You were Excuse me, Chris. I'm speaking, and I'm not done yet. I have heard your chance. Time when you are going to be done. I think that that's what people need to know. Nikki is corrupt. This is the fourth debate, the fourth debate that you would be voted in the first 20 minutes as the most obnoxious blowhard in America. Hey, hey everyone, break it up. There's no need to fight. You're all obnoxious blowhards. And yet, based on the polls, your problem is you don't blow hard enough. Although. I will say, if there's one service anyone could perform at these stupid debates, it's tearing Vivek Ramaswamy to shreds. I mean, allow me to borrow the parlance of my outer borough brethren when I say, this <laughs> guy. <laughs> now, if you somehow manage to find News Nation on your TV guide somewhere up there between the pay-per-view curling channel and those <laughs> channels that are just music, who are those for? Can we do a closer look on that one day? Hey, you want to hear some tunes? I'll put it on channel 985 on the TV. I have it in HD. Why does that matter? <laughs> anyway, if you actually tuned into the second place debate, you were probably frustrated by the fact that none of the candidates, except for Christie, bothered to go after Trump at all, who was leading them by a huge margin. At one point, both the moderators and Christie repeatedly gave Florida Governor Ron DeSantis a clear opening to say the obvious, that Trump is unfit to serve as president. And DeSantis wouldn't even say that. You seem to be saying Donald Trump is no longer mentally fit to be president. Is that what you think? Look, he, he is showing... Father time is undefeated. He got the nomination. But do you think he's mentally fit to be uh, president? I think we need to have somebody younger. Why doesn't he just answer the question? The question was very direct. Is he fit to be president or isn't he? Is we he do fit not or want isn't to he? do something You're that's talking about him being 80, 80 years old. It doesn't mean Ron, that somebody is he couldn't fit? get elected. That's Ron, Ron, the people that Ron, 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 is he fit to be president? So you do think he's fit. You big result. We should not nominate somebody who's almost 80 years old. He's afraid to answer. No, I'm not. My God, how hard is it to say Donald Trump is unfit? He's mentally unfit, he's physically unfit, he's politically unfit, even his clothes are unfit. <laughs> he's facing four indictments, fomented a violent coup attempt, forgets which city he's in, who he's running against, thinks windmills cause cancer, and once said there were airports during the Revolutionary War, because everyone remembers that famous painting of George Washington taxiing across the runway. <laughs> Although, in fairness, if you've ever flown out of LaGuardia, you'd think it was built in the 1700s, too. <laughs> you know what's a bummer? Joke isn't true anymore because they redid LaGuardia, and it's so nice now. <laughs> it's so, it's the only New York airport I use anymore, and I don't even use it as an airport. <laughs> Once a week, my wife and I go for date night. We have a nice meal. <laughs> Let TSA get a little frisky with us, then we just go home. <laughs> of LaGuardia. <laughs> it's no kind of life. Anyway, where was I? All right, Christy and DeSantis. Watching these two argue with each other is like 
watching Master Shake yell at Meatwad on Aqua Teen Hunger Force. And if you're wondering who's who, allow me to remind you that Donald Trump is the one who coined the term Meatball Ron, a nickname so perfect it stuck even though Trump doesn't actually use it. You almost feel for DeSantis. He thought this was his time. Darling of the right, governor of the third most populous state, built a huge reserve of campaign donations, and then one day, an advisor comes in and says, bad news, Trump called you Meatball Ron. And DeSantis said, so what? It's not gonna stick, is it? Turned to his wife, said, do you think it'll stick, Casey? And she said, I don't think you have anything to worry about, Meatball Ron. I mean, Ron! <laughs> Go, I'm gonna take the kids home. Say bye to Meatball Dad. I mean, Dad! <laughs> so no one in the GOP actually wants to take on the front runner, despite his obvious weaknesses. Just this morning, he was back in court for the $250 million civil fraud trial that could decimate his business empire and his personal fortune. He was once again sitting at the defense table, scowling in front of a computer screen like a teen at the DMV forced to watch a video about the dangers of drunk driving. <laughs> Before entering the courtroom, he did his usual shtick where he called the trial a witch hunt and all that nonsense, but he also claimed today's testimony would vindicate him and that the banks actually think he's innocent as well. So we're going in now, we have an expert witness, one of the uh, great experts in the country, and I hope you'll all be able to listen to him. But it'll just be another day. You if, you look at, if you look at the case, uh, we did nothing wrong. There were no victims. The bank loves us. The bank testified. They love us. We did absolutely nothing wrong. We never even defaulted. We never had a default letter sent to us. The bank said we were a perfect customer. In what context would a bank even call you a perfect customer? You know, I was at the bank once, and an ATM came up to me, big ATM. <laughs> strong ATM. <laughs> Tears pouring down its screen onto its disgusting keypad, and it said to me, it said, sir, you're a perfect customer. And I said, <laughs> I said, thank you, ATM machine. And it said, the M stands for machine. You don't need to say it twice. <laughs> and I said, you're wrong. The M stands for meatball wrong. <laughs> Trump's court appearance comes two days after he once again sent shockwaves of anxiety throughout the political world by claiming he would be a dictator if he wins a second term, but only on day one, that answer came in response to persistent questioning by Fox host Sean Hannity, who was trying to get Trump to refute reports that he and his allies are drawing up plans to use the Justice Department to get revenge on his critics. But Trump refused to follow Hannity's lead. To be clear, do you in any way have any plans whatsoever, if re-elected president, to abuse power, to break the law, to use the government to go after people? You mean like they're using right now? Under no circumstances, you are promising America tonight, you would never abuse power as retribution against anybody. Except for day one. Yeah. Except Look, what? He's going crazy. Except for day one. Meaning? I want to close the border, and I want to drill, that's drill, not a, that's, drill. That's not, oh, no. that's not retribution. <laughs> I got I'm going to be, I'm going to be, you know, he keeps, <laughs> we love this guy. He says, you're not going to be a dictator, are you? I said, no, 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 other than day one. I will say, I love how much Trump enjoys making Hannity miserable. Hannity was clearly trying to help Trump out, and Trump laughed in his face like he was Joe Pesci about to whack him. This guy, I love this guy. He's a funny guy. Hey, let's take a ride out to the woods together. Get in my car. <laughs> Whenever Hannity interviews Trump, there's this weird dynamic where Hannity, the interviewer, is desperately trying not to make news, and Trump, the candidate, is like, Sean, this is boring. I'm going to make some news. And now... Trump's allies are mad, not that Trump said he'd be a dictator, but that Hannity asked him the question in the first place. Here's Trump's ally and fellow criminal, Steve Bannon, who was himself charged with fraud before Trump pardoned him and has been convicted in contempt of Congress charges, tearing into Hannity on his weird internet show. Sean Hannity actually thought he was helping Trump last night. Let me ask you a question. Will you be a dictator? Trump gives a full heckle. And here's what I love. The audience gets it. They're laughing. By the way, Sean, they're laughing at you. They're laughing at this stupid, ridiculous question. Of course, Trump's not a dictator. It's absurd on the face of even to consider, even to ask that question that Morning Joe and those guys can cut the clips on shows you're an idiot. And we don't have time for idiots, bro. This is a, this is a war. How dumb are you? We're playing for keeps. This is war. And you're just not good enough. And you're just not smart enough. I love how Bannon can both say it's crazy to use words like dictator while also hammering home, we're at war, <laughs> bro. <laughs> and I do believe Bannon thinks we're in a war because he always looks like he's been living in a bunker or I don't know, the inside of a dryer. 
I love watching all these horrible people fight with each other. Christie calling Vivek obnoxious, Trump calling DeSantis a meatball, Bannon calling Hannity an idiot, nobody calling Trump anything lest he eat them like a French fry. It's such a striking contrast with the other side. Say what you will about Democrats, but there was never any name calling at their debates. The most aggressive thing that ever happened at a Democratic debate was Bernie shooting his hand up in the air to answer a question like he was trying to hail a cab in a rainstorm. 99% 90, of the taxis have a go with the 1% of the passengers. The far and away GOP frontrunner confessed he'll be a dictator, was in court today for a fraud trial, and faces four more criminal indictments, and yet none of his GOP rivals want to take him on. I would spend more time recapping the debate, but this show is only an hour long, and... We don't have time for idiots, bro. This has been A Closer Look. Hey, a quick message for our Canadian viewers. This is very exciting news. Our videos were not available on YouTube uh, for the last few months. They are now back on YouTube. And we also want to say thanks to CTV, who is airing our shows in their entirety on their network. Check them out there as well. Thank you, Canada. Good luck with everything.